In this episode of Aki Talk, we'll be taking a closer look at the retina and discussing age-related macular degeneration with retina specialist Shanika Esperes. Dr. Esperes? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for a brand new episode of Aki Talk. My name's Nick, and today we have a very special guest joining us from Northeast Ohio Eye Surgeons, Dr. Shanika Esperes. Dr. Esperes, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure. Uh, so, yes, I am uh, Shanika Esperes. I am a cataract surgeon as well as medical retina specialist in Northeast Ohio. And it's been my pleasure to come back to the Northeast Ohio area where I grew up. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, well, thank you for that introduction. Uh, I was hoping maybe uh, before we get started, uh, if you could talk a little bit about your specialty uh, to our viewers. Yes, I'd love to. So the retina is a part of the eye. Believe it or not, uh, when you go to medical school and then become an ophthalmologist, you can further specialize into almost every layer of the eye. Uh, so there's the front of the eye, which is the cornea. Um, and then there's the back of the eye, which is lined by the retina. And the retina is the light sensing tissue in the back of the eye. I give my patients the analogy that if you think of your eye, like the camera, the cornea or your lens or cataract is the, the lens in the camera and your retina is sort of like the processing center inside the camera. So that's what I specialize in. I specialize in diseases that can affect the processing center, which is in the back of your eye, also called the retina. Perfect. And um, as a retina specialist, uh, what type of patients do you typically see? So I love my job because I get to see a variety of patients. I would say most of my patients are in the uh, 60 to 70 and above category because a lot of diseases that affect the retina have an increased risk with age, with time. So the most common disease I see is age-related macular degeneration. But I also see younger patients who have systemic conditions that can affect their retina, like patients with diabetes. So I do have some young patients that are in their 20s and 30s um, who have something called diabetic retinopathy, which is where you can get leaky blood vessels uh, from high blood sugars in your retina. Awesome. Thank you for that information, doctor. And uh, you talked a little bit about age-related macular degeneration. I was hoping that maybe you can explain to our viewers who don't know a little bit more about what macular degeneration is and who it commonly affects. Yes, that's a great question. So it's, like I said, it's one of the most common problems or conditions that I see in the back of the eye. Uh, if you break down the word, so age related, so the highest risk factor for this condition is age. I say more fun things with more birthdays. And unfortunately, this is one thing that can increase with time. So a lot of the condition is out of our control in a sense. Um, so age related and then macula. So macula is the center of your retina. That's the portion of your retina that's responsible for the clearest color vision. Um, and then degeneration, meaning that over time with age, the macula can um, not work as well as it used to. Um, and so there's two different types of macular degeneration. There's the dry type, and this type is the most common type. And for the most part, many patients may not even notice that they have dry macular degeneration. It can range from mild, medium, and advanced. So in the mild to medium uh, stages of this condition, like I said, patients may or may not notice changes in their vision. Uh, that's why I encourage patients to come in for their yearly eye exams, uh, because these are things that we can diagnose prior to patients noticing uh, symptoms. In the more advanced categories of dry macular degeneration, this is when patients might start noticing some distortions or blind spots right at the center of your vision in the macula. Um, they may have some difficulty with reading, uh, may notice that they need brighter light or bigger print font. 
And then the other type of macular degeneration is the wet type of macular degeneration. And this is when there's bleeding or swelling in the macula. Again, this is not something patients will feel, but it can cause a significant decrease in vision that happens quickly. And usually this is what bring patients in to see the retina specialist. And this is where we start talking about treatments for the eye, like injection treatments. Excellent information. Thank you. And uh, doctor, do you, uh, what do we need to look out for as far as like concerns, concern wise, like what was one of the first things that you look for when it comes to this? Yeah, that's so important. I think it's really important for patients to know what to look out for in terms of their vision so they can really take charge of their health and vision goes along with the health of your rest of your body. So um, patients, what I always advise to look out for is if they have a sudden change in vision meaning if they have new spots or distortions in the center of their vision, if they have new flashes or floaters, if they feel like there's a veil blocking part of their vision uh, that's not going away, that's a reason to give your eye doctor a call and come on in. I would say, don't wait, uh, you know, especially if this is going on for longer than a day, it's really important to talk to an eye care provider to see, you know, to get the care that you need. Um, I would say on the flip side of things, there's things that patients can do at home to try to reduce their risk of things like age-related macular degeneration. Um, so a healthy diet and lifestyle is really important. I know that might sound cliche, but it's actually, there's studies showing that it's important for the health of your eyes. Uh, so I encourage my patients to keep up with moderate intensity activity throughout the week. Uh, lots of green leafy vegetables. Uh, and if you don't like vegetables, put it in a smoothie. So I recommend uh, leafy green vegetables like kale, broccoli, spinach are really good for the center of revision for the cells that are affected uh, in your macula by macular degeneration. There's other things that are in our control, including uh, smoking. So reducing uh, your risk of macular degeneration by reducing and quitting smoking is really, really important. Again, this is something that's within the patient's control. Well, you heard it there, kids. You hear it from Dr. Esperez. Eat your greens. Uh, don't smoke. There you go. <laughs> uh, well, thank you for that, Dr. Esperez. And uh, Dr. Esperez, you talked a little bit earlier about, we, we've been talking about age-related macular degeneration. Uh, so what is your uh, treatment protocol for age-related macular degeneration? Yes, another great question. So for age-related macular degeneration, like I said, for the dry type, most of it is prevention as much as possible. I do recommend vitamins in certain cases, and these are the age-related macular degeneration vitamins, and they're called ARIDS, A-R-E-D-S two vitamins. Uh, and so these are vitamins that you can get over the counter and uh, they have been shown to reduce your risk of progression in about 10 to 15% of patients. So it's not a medication, um, but it's again, something at least something the patients can take to try to reduce the risk of progression. For the other type, for the wet type of macular degeneration, that's when we talk about injection treatments for the eye. And usually it consists of monthly injection treatments until the bleeding and swelling in the retina is improved. I would say when someone hears the word injection, it sounds really scary. Um, and uh, I've, I've seen a lot of nervous patients before, and I would say, um, 99.9% .9 of patients do much better with injections than they think they will. Um, so again, injection sounds scary, but there's something that if you, uh, you know, see your retina specialist, talk to them about the treatments, um, they're not as bad as they sound. And it's at least something we can do to try to save vision. Well, excellent. Thank you for that information, Dr. Esperez. And, um, as, are there any new technologies or new developments that we should be on the lookout for? So I think there's some exciting stuff down the pipeline uh, that's currently in clinical trials. Uh, right now, the treatment standard are injections, and there's a few different medications on the market. So I would definitely speak with your eye care provider about which medication is best for you. And there's been a lot of advancements in the field of medications that we can inject for the eye. Down the line, there are studies looking at uh, 
transplantation of retinal pigment epithelial cells, basically transplanting those photoreceptor cells to the center of the vision to try to regenerate and give um, some sort of usable vision back to the macula or the center of the vision. Again, I think it's going to be a few years before we see that, um, you know, FDA approved and, and more mainstream. But uh, again, the field of ophthalmology is progressing. So that'll be exciting. And there's other types of medication uh, delivery ports that are currently being tested, like a port that we can actually place in the eye um, to give kind of a sustained release of these medications. So patients might not have to come into the injection as, sorry, patients may not have to come back into the clinic as often for these injections. Oh, excellent. That will definitely be on the lookout for all of those. Um, and Dr. Esperes, if you don't mind, I wanted to kind of change subjects just a tad bit here. Uh, I, I noticed that you have an Instagram account. Uh, it, your Instagram tag is Modern Mom MD. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about this? And um, as a new parent myself uh, of a five-month-old son, uh, how, how, can you just give us a little bit of advice about how you juggle being a mom and being a doctor at the same time, that, that's just, it's fascinating to me. Sure. I, I love this, this question and I'm by no means an expert. I'm, I'm still figuring out um, just as much as you are. Congratulations uh, um, on your five month old. That's so exciting. And I think each stage of, um, you know, infancy and toddlerhood is, is, different and fun and challenging in so many ways. Uh, so in the last few months, I changed my handle to modern mom MD, and I'm actually launching a blog soon, um, to basically support parents in medicine, uh, because being a physician and being a parent are two very different things. And there's no manual for being a parent. Right. Uh, and so I created my blog as kind of a, a resource and support and inspiration for those of us kind of going through similar struggles and challenges and joys in this journey of parenthood and being a doctor. Um, I would say, um, try to enjoy uh, the, the small things and the little moments that you have with your kids because they grow so fast. I have a four-year-old and a one-and-a-half-year-old. So I see the difference and I see how fast they grow and change and um, in the beginning, there's a lot of sleep deprivation, um, you know, um, babies need to eat, eat, eat. And so I would say relying on your, your village, um, whether it's a family or caregivers or hiring, um, you know, someone to come in and help is really important for, um, you know, parents, mental health, as well as being able to take care of your children. Uh, I think in this day and age, sometimes we're uh, we think of it as weakness if we need to ask for help or need to uh, outsource help for cleaning and cooking and things like that. But I am all about that, leaning on my village. Um, I'm thankful to have family and, and a nanny. Um, so I would say number one tip or advice is to lean on your village um, to get help and enjoy the, the small moments because these kids do grow up fast. And I know that sounds cliche. No, I, I second pretty much everything that you just said. That's exactly how I feel. Uh, but it, thank you for that information. And if you haven't checked it out, please go check out uh, her Instagram, Modern Mom MD. Uh, Dr. Esperes, was there anything else that you'd like to tell our audience before we leave today? Uh, just that it was my pleasure to be on here. Please feel free to reach out to me, DM me on Instagram or check out my blog when it launches soon. I'm always happy to answer questions about eye health or motherhood or anything between. Well, excellent. There you go. And like like she said, check out her uh, Instagram, Modern Mom MD, uh, and Dr. Shanika Esperes. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Take care.